Hi guys, it's Alex. Someone how's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. So today I wanted to do a video which is the best and worst of Etat Libre d'Orange. I have smelled enough of their perfumes, I've put in the work to feel that I'm at the point to rank some of their fragrances, basically my five favourites and my least favourites in the line. I've smelled pretty much all of them bar a couple of very old ones that are discontinued now so they kind of don't count anyway so yeah that's basically it i like the brand there was a certain point where they were considered one of the most edgy niche brands out there but as of late i feel things have kind of slipped a little bit and their releases have become very hit and miss there have been some great ones recently but there's also been some real eh -eh ones so i'm not going to talk too much about it i'm just going to start with the list and here we go. So the first one on the naughty list, it's time to sing the praises of the good ones and weed out the bad. That's what I'm here to do. And the first one on the list is I Am Trash, release that was around 2018 it came out, two years ago. And while I love the concept of this perfume, this one is all about materials that are upcycled or recycled. The reason it's on the list is not because of the way it smells. It's quite a pleasant, rosy, apple, citrusy, floral smell. The reason it's on the list first is because of its performance. It really didn't last on my skin at all. It just didn't really go anywhere, didn't really change. They promised this whole relation to Secretions Magnifique, which is one of their most famous fragrances. But while I love the message, the perfume was just a bit flat and a bit dull. I mean, it's pretty, it smells of roses, and it's bright, and it's fresh as well, but it just didn't last more than 10 minutes, so... Eco-friendly, environmentally friendly fragrance, I just wish it performed much better. That's why it's on my list. So the first one on my thumbs up list is Experimentum Crucis and this one to me is an extension of I Am Trash. This is everything that I Am Trash should have been with a much more freaky deaky edge to it I would say. This one's based on the works of Isaac Newton and they say what if a rose fell on his head instead of an apple? That's the whole premise. It's named after his works. Experimental Crucius is the works of Isaac Newton. So it's great, this one. In terms of performance, this one is one of the most tenacious, diffusive and long-lasting fragrances that I have smelled from, Exper from Experimental Crucius, from Italie Boudorange. It's another rose fragrance, it's also apple again. It's like they took I Am Trash and they just enhanced it so much. So it's kind of edgy though, there's honey in it and there's also cumin which is the note of death for many people I know but this fragrance is really smooth. It's not strong where it's obnoxious but you literally need a couple of sprays and it's everywhere. I took this fragrance with me on holiday when I went to Spain with a couple of my friends and I took a sample of it for one of my friends and he wore it for the whole time we were there and it pretty much took over everything. But it's not offensive, it's just got enough of an edge, there's lychee in it as well, so it's essentially like a tiny skanky cumin rose that's sweet and soft but performs like an absolute monster. So. Experiment and Crucius is one of the better releases that are new from Italie Boudorange. The next one on the list is called Yes I Do, and this fragrance used to be called Don't Get Me Wrong Baby, I Don't Swallow. Italie Boudorange love their risque names, they like to push buttons, they like to have names that make you stand up and listen, like Fat Electrician, and there was one called Philippine Houseboy, which is now called Fils de Dieu. Neither of those were on this list, but Yes I Do, they renamed it to Yes I Do, which means basically 
Yes, I do swallow, <laughs> but I think they rebranded it and it's in this pink bottle now and a lot of people that don't know about it, I think, view it as a bridal fragrance. Like, yes, I do, I will marry you. So it's on the not so good list for me because it's a very straightforward Lily of the Valley floral. It ticks a lot of boxes. I mean, it's not ugly or bad and it does have quite a good performance, but when you smell it, it it feels like a generic floral to me, and Atali Bidorange to me uh, were all about the edginess and pushing boundaries and raising eyebrows and things like that. So, Yes I Do is a very safe, to me, uninteresting floral. There's a plane going past, sorry guys. It doesn't happen very often here, but right now it is. Anyway, that's that one. Let's move on to another good one. So the next one on the list, I wanted to interchange a few times. There was two that I couldn't decide between. One of them is You or Someone Like You, which isn't on the list because of its performance, even though it's great. But the one I want to put on my thumbs up list is Ida Protection. And it is the one that comes with the dragon on the bottle. You'll see it in the video anyway. And it's a really good rose perfume. It's a Bulgarian rose. It's a little bit edgy. There's black pepper in it. It's kind of animalic as well, and they also say that it has a blood accord. So it's a very punchy, bitey, kind of jammy, sharp rose perfume that I didn't like for the longest time, but I wore it and wore it and wore it, and it made it into my top five Atali Bidorange fragrances, because if you want rose that just delivers, it's really good. There's amber, I think, in it as well, and maybe musk. And the dry down is way not as interesting as the opening, so it's one of those ones that I tend to reapply again because it's super flowy and it kind of trails behind you and if you like roses that are a bit metallic and sharp, that's a good one. It's got a lot of body and it just punches you in the face and I like it for that reason. So, Eau de Protection. I like the name too, Protection Water. And the label is one of my favourites from their bottles as well. So, that's that one. So the next one I want to weed out is one of the newest ones to be released from the house. It's called She Was An Anomaly. This one is one of those Atar Libre Orange fragrances where the story and the idea really overtakes the end product. Similar to I Am Trash, the name's really cool and uh, this fragrance was created by Artificial Intelligence. I think they put some kind of information into an algorithm to decide what's the most common combination of notes nowadays or something like that. And what came out of it is a very simple transparent iris perfume that has a bit of sandalwood and lots of white musk that feels almost like a non-perfume. It's very underwhelming. People that I show this to are just a little bit like, oh, what's that then? That is, I, I think it would be really good for people that like Molecule or very inoffensive perfumes or uh, I'm not really wearing a perfume perfume. But to me, knowing how many cool things they have, this one just really fell flat. And the story I was excited about, this artificially produced fragrance, but ultimately it was just a, a very transparent iris and it's very similar to Glossier uh, U, that makeup brand that's on Instagram I think. Anyway, it's a, just a basic iris with a little bit of wood and m musky molecule, that's it. So the next one on the list was not an instant love for me, this is a thumbs up one. It is, I'm not going to say the full name because I can't even do it, it's got about 50 words in it. It's, I call it Herman. And this is, at first, like I said, didn't really get it, and then something clicked, and I realised this is really edgy and cool. This perfume is all about shadow, and it's about two guys riding through a forest, I think, on horses, and talking about their shadows, and their shadows having scent and personality, and it's a very unusual story, and I think it might be a poem as well possibly, could be getting that wrong. But this fragrance feels, smells to me like the colour of the bottle. It's like a slate grey, metallic, cold perfume. There's tons of ambroxan in here, which makes it smell silvery and really voluminous. 
but it's also a rose and it's also an incense perfume and there's spice in it as well it's clean and it's really cold and I'm gonna spray it in the air mistake it's gonna fill the room because it's another very tenacious perfume it only needs a dust on my hand and I can really smell it um, it's just abstract and it's very modern and new age and fits that type of person that is tired of florals because even though it's rosy it's not it's not flowery in any way it's just a very good use of the ambroxan molecule with other supporting notes so this one's really abstract interesting for sure and it's in my top three which is why I have the bottle of it here so next downer let's weed them out so the next downer is remarkable people this fragrance I think is a dedication to the staff that work for Atal Libre d'Orange and also just people everywhere people that are unsung heroes and deserve a bit of attention they say it's a good introduction to the brand I disagree this was another one where the idea is cool and the note list is actually very cool it has it's grapefruit it's essentially a citrus perfume but it's also they say it has a champagne accord they say it has um, curry a curry accord or a curry molecule or something like that and it's gold and I thought it was gonna be really interesting ultimately it's, a, it's just a kind of slightly fizzy grapefruit softened citrus perfume and it's very unremarkable just to put it out there so they say that it's the wearer of the perfume that makes the perfume remarkable which I agree with that statement I think that's really cool but the perfume is very unremarkable so the next thumbs up is Marquis de Sade oh, I bang on about labdenum all the time in many videos my last recent video I did the zoo spotlight talked about labdenum a lot I've always said I would wear labdenum alone I think it's an amazing note that's multifaceted complex doesn't really need anything else and Atali Boudorange know that too so they made a fragrance that is just about labdenum because labdenum gives you leathery tones uh, it's incensey as well ambery of course and the Marquis de Sade was you know freaky freaky guy so they wanted to create a leather that's um it's just simple if you know what labdenum smells like this is it smooth resinous ambery leathery slightly incensey perfume that is great to just lavish and I think layer as well if you want to kind of oriental up something that you like that doesn't really feel oriental good one for that so Marquis de Sade and the last one on the downer list is True Lust the reason this one's on the list is because I feel like this perfume is kind of lazy from the brand so basically it incorporates two fragrances they already have so Poutin des Palaces the one that I think everyone knows it's the boudoir soft rose violety musky perfume and then they have another one called dangerous complicity which is centered around osmanthus it's kind of a fruity rum also not very interesting perfume but true lust is a mixture of both of those it's literally like they just mixed the two together and made something else and it, the result is not very interesting either Poutin des Palaces Palace is already pretty cool it doesn't really need to be amalgamated into anything else so it's on the list because of laziness I'm sure a lot of work went into that but it when you smell it it feels like those if you smell both of those perfumes and then smell that it's got the osmanthus from this one the rose violet from this the musk from this something else from that and it's it's uninspiring so on to the last one the last one on the list is one of the boldest perfumes I think that this house makes not talking about Secretions Magnifique that would be on this list but I don't think it's the worst or the best I think it's amazing for what it is and I have to mention it in this video because it's the one that gets talked about probably the most due to its nature and the fact that it smells like semen and blood and sweat and tears and adrenaline and milk and all of those crazy things but 
I wanted to put Lian on my list because this is really not for everyone and it's such a cool perfume based on how juxtaposed all of the notes are. So this perfume is Aldehydes. This is sparkly, golden, clean Aldehydes in abundance. However, the clash is a super dark leather and also incense. This is a fragrance that I can only wear for one day. I can't wear this for more than one day in a row. I couldn't wear this for a whole week. I couldn't have this as a signature because it's so overbearing. You might be thinking, why is that in your favorite list if it's so overbearing? But when this is worn properly, lightly and not too often, this is amazing. And it almost has this kind of gasoline feel to me when I, when I smell it. It's so strong and really dark and it portrays the color black to me perfectly. And I love that it's called Rien because Rien means nothing. And this perfume certainly is not nothing. It's so in your face that, again, they're just balancing everything out with a name that's nothing with a perfume that is just obnoxious and amazing. So Rien is so good. They do have a Rien Intense one didn't need to be made at all. This one does enough of the job by itself. And the intense one is, I think, 34 or 35% concentrated. Just totally unnecessary. So yeah, I wanted to put this one on there. This isn't my favorite, but it's definitely in my top five, as you've just seen. So, rien. So that's it. I hope you guys liked this list. Best and worst of. Maybe it might make you consider when you sample or try them out. It's only my humble opinion, guys, but I've found my favourites now and I'm going to stick to those unless something amazing comes along soon. We'll see. Anyway, I'm Archie Romano, trying to make the world more better, one video at a time. Goodbye.